I am so happy that you're here today. My name is Stephanie Nault, and I am a Blushington Pro Certified Artist. I was certified back in March. I'm based in Phoenix, Arizona, and I am so happy to be teaching you the pure and natural Blushington signature look today. This is my model, Lindsay. I am also joined by my Master of IT with Blushington, Joseph. He's gonna be dropping all the links for you um, in the chat. And if you have any questions, please pop those in the chat as well. And I will do my best to answer those. And if not, then hopefully we'll have time at the end to follow up on those. Before we get started, I just wanted to give you a little background about Flushington. Flushington, as we know in 2020, as with everything going on in the world, we all had to pump the brakes, stop what we were doing and just really reassess how we did things. And Blushington was no exception. So they went from brick and mortar locations to doing virtual learning. So one-on-one -on -one makeup lessons, as well as bridal trials, bridal lessons, and also the Blushington Academy. That was a 25 hour um, virtual lesson during the week that you would learn all tips and tricks for being a makeup artist. I talked about this. I did a whole video on this on my Instagram TV. My Instagram is at StephanieN7. I talk all about the Academy, what it meant to me, and how awesome it was. As a makeup artist, we are so quick to get into our routine that we can sometimes forget about the basics of makeup and also how to do things maybe differently. So it's a really great way to reassess and like learn some great skills again if you forgot how to do them or just add to the whole lesson of that you do. Um, Flushington is female founded brands. So the brands that they sell are all female founded, which is so great. So encouraging the women in business, which is really awesome. I also loved that there was a thorough course with Flushington. So everything is outlined and every day you focus on a different look and how to achieve that look with using really great Flushington products. The Academy gives you a kit worth over a thousand dollars. It's so phenomenal. I'm going to be using so many of the products today that have become my personal favorites that I use in my makeup kit for doing bridal trials, um, makeup lessons, and there's some favorites of mine that I swoon over and I pretty much get everyone to try to get them hooked on it. So if you are interested in the Academy, you can use code SN10 to save 10% off your tuition. So that is a really great opportunity that they're offering, Washington is offering to artists. So if, if you are ready, I am ready. So we're gonna do the pure and natural look today. I am starting all of the look with the Delium 14 piece set. Let me show you if I can maneuver all of these brushes without talking. <laughs> so this came with the Flushington Academy. I absolutely love that it takes the guesswork out of the brushes you need to complete a look. This is just so quick and easy. And I love using the tools for maybe not even what they're expected to be used for. It's just a really great way to not have to worry about, do I have this brush? Or if I apply my foundation, do I have a brush for that? We've got it covered. So this is like a awesome set that I really do offer um, and suggest that anybody I'm doing a makeup lesson gets too, because it just covers all of your bases. So let's get started. As a makeup artist, I start with eyes. Um, not everybody does. I love, the concept of working with the eyes first. If you're doing a super smoky eye, you can wipe it away and then begin the rest of the face. I know a lot of artists love to prep the skin and make it look really great first. I love that idea. I personally, as an artist, love that I can just make a mess on the eyes if I wanted to, clean up under them afterwards, and then prep the skin so that it's perfectly polished. Today I'm going to be using the Anastasia Eye Primer. So this is a really light white primer, if you can see, it's pretty white. Um, but it blends down really well and a little bit goes a really long way. So you can see how much I used and how much of it's covering my like entire hand. So you do not need a lot at all. I will put one dot 
on my palette. So as a makeup artist, I work off of a palette. I love that it's sanitary, you can clean it, you can wipe it clean afterwards, and it just gives you a really great neutral canvas to be able to start working on your model or your client. So I'm just gonna add a little bit onto my palette here. And that is going to be enough for two, if not many more eyes. So I'm just going to take the, I'm actually going to take the 775 brush, which comes in that 14 piece set. It's kind of like two, two toned with the bristles. So it's going to just grab a really great amount of product without being too much. So I like to work, work the product in on the palette. I'm pulling away the product and making it really um, shearing it down a little bit so I'm not grabbing too much product. And I'm going to start on the center of the lid, working it along the lash line. And then blending up towards the brow. So with this, there's, because we have so much product that we could apply, we really just want it to be sheared down. So you want, because this can come out very white too, you want it to be more neutral. So I blended it down. If you can see that it is, gives you a slight sheen on the eyes without being too much. I can still see her lid through it, so I'm not creating that super heavy white um, eyeshadow face. I love applying, as with all product, where you apply the brush and touch the brush first is where you're gonna have the most product. So if you are applying, if I took the brush and started under the brow bone, you're gonna have most of that product there. And that's not where we want it. We want it to be on the lid to help neutralize color and help control any oil that could appear on the eye. I like to zhuzh it along the lash line too, because we are gonna be applying an eyeliner. And I like to make sure that it's worked along the lash line so that when we apply that eyeliner, it's waterproof too. So that was the Anastasia eye primer that I used. Next, I'm going to use the Soft Glam palette. If you don't have this palette, this is one of my favorites. I love using it for bridal looks, for natural looks. Um, but it has the option to really smoke out and make more of a smoky eye with it as well. I love that you can stick with more of the lighter colors if that's in your wheelhouse and you're comfortable. But the darker colors are really great to use for a liner. If it's too much and you don't love that really heavy smoky look, smoking it out with like the darker color and maybe not even the black. Maybe it's just more of a dark brown or more of this burgundy color, you can just help to um, make more of a smoky liner. So this, for this one, I am going to take the 777 brush, and I am going to use the tempera, 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 <laughs> tomato, tomato, and I am going to apply this once again, because we have most of our product on our brush, I'm going to apply it in the center of the eye, working that product out and up, working a little bit into that inner corner. And I love that this is such a great neutral color as a canvas to add to our other colors on top. You can apply it on the inner corner a little bit to help brighten. We will go back in in a little bit with some concealer, but I love that it just helps to brighten that inner corner and then you can do any other work that you need to with the concealer to help brighten as well. Same thing, applying the center of the eye. I personally love working with a really beautiful neutral when I'm doing a natural look, 
um, on the eye, I like to start with lighter and build to darker, which is a really great concept so that you're not trying to do any recon work by trying to like blend down any of the darker. I just layer each um, darkness of the shadow as I'm moving along. So next I'm going to use the 785 brush, which is a super fluffy brush. This is like one of my all time favorite brushes. I love a fluffy brush. I've used it for concealer under the eye to blend. I've used it for blending out a crease along the uh, lash line if you wanted a super diffused smoky look. It's a really versatile brush. I have about eight of these in my kit because if I run out of the brush that I would typically use for a certain area of the face, I love this brush for that. So I'm going to go in with the burnt orange, which is a really pretty soft brown, but it's not as far as the burnt orange color can be deceiving. It sounds like it's going to be dark, but it's really just a beautiful um, light brown that I love to create dimension. So I am going to, I'm starting on the corner of her eye with that brush. And what I love too about this is that you want to pick up just enough on the tip of the brush so that you're not working the product into all of the bristles deep into the brush. If that were the case, you're going to have lots of product and you're gonna to have to try to move that product around on the eye and it will likely be too much. So start with more and build on it afterwards. So a little bit on the top of the brush as we did before, starting on the corner. And I am just working the product in the crease. So there's so many different methods as a makeup artist. Some people have their favorites. There is the windshield wiper, right, for the crease, which we're probably most common with, familiar with. And then there's also the swirl. So I love doing a combination of both, depending on how I want to blend out the product. So I'm starting with the corner and then working in little circles around with, by the time I get to the inner or center part of the eye, there's hardly any product on my brush. So I really want to work this product in and diffuse it out so that by, I'm not depositing a lot of color in the inner uh, part of the eye. Same thing, starting on the corner. Working the product in And then I'm going to go back, pick up the same color on the brush again, and working that. Lindsay has great eyes, so I like to play up her eyes and really give her complementary colors to her skin tone and her hair color, but then also really enhance them so that they pop. I am also going to go in a little bit with this dusty rose color, which is like a soft plum. I love it because the two together, I feel like it really gives great dimension, but it's not heavy because we're going for that pure and natural look. So we don't want to have a really heavy smoky eye. I like to take this and apply it similar to the same place that we did before, but I'm pulling a little bit onto the lid. just to give that really soft dimension, but nothing that's going to be really intense or heavy. Still using that same brush. So you can see how we've created shape in her eye and we've really, without even having any liner on, we've already created some dimension on her eyes. We are going to come back to this palette in just a second. 
So next, I am going to apply the Stila Smudge Stick in Lion Ridge. So I have been working with Stila for a very long time. And this is one of my tried and true favorite products. So as the name implies, it's a smudge stick. So you don't have to make it look perfect. You can just kind of honestly scribble and go. So I am going to, because I'm working on a model, making sure it is sanitized, rubbing alcohol, all about sanitation when you are working on a client. I am going to pair, I am going to pair this liner with the 780 brush. So I am going to, as like we talked about, the smudge stick, I am going to smudge it on the eye. And lionfish is a really beautiful brown. It gives dimension on the lash line, has a little bit of gold flecking in it, and it's really complementary to so many people's skin types tones and I keep it in my kit. I love it. It is really easy to use and this is one of my go-tos for my personal everyday. So we're just going to scribble along the lash line and this is a really forgiving product. So you can scribble along the lash line. You have time to work with the product. So so many times when you work with a eyeliner it will dry down before you can maneuver it or place it where you want it to go. And this is just really forgiving. And I feel like by smudging it, you really get to see more of that um, gold flecking in it as well. And it just makes your lashes look even fuller. So if you're putting on a tight line, that's great. And it's gonna give you that definition, but I feel like putting on more of a smudge stick or smoking out that lash line just enhances any sort of lashes that you have. It just makes them look even fuller. And I'm focusing most of the product on, I'm smudging out and up and taking a little bit of that into the inner corner. Open. It's really subtle pretty. I'm all about products that you can manipulate for what you need them to do, but also not be so serious about it. Sometimes the products, um, you, when you're using them, it can be, oh, I'm like, I have to put it here or I have to make it look this way. And I love this product because that's not at all what you have to do. You can really just play with it and smudge it out. If you wanted to make a smoky eye with this, you can actually smudge it all along your entire lid smoke it out with um, a fuller brush and it will create the smoky base that you could then add shadow onto after. I'm actually gonna go back in with the Soft Glam palette. I'm just going to add just a little bit of dimension on her outer corners. So I'm going to actually mix the Rustic and the Sienna. And I'm going to give her a subtle lift on the corners by extending that eyeliner out just a little bit. If you wanted to do a little bit smokier, you could go in with the black or the burgundy over top. The, eyeshadow, the eyeliner itself, because it's waterproof, is going to add that perfect base to then add shadow over top to keep the shadow in place. So that's a fun um, trick too. If you don't want to just use shadow if you're afraid it's gonna move, you can definitely add more of a waterproof eyeliner underneath, even if it's not the exact color you wanted, and then go back in with your eyeshadow to um, create that eyeliner look that you want. I'm going to go back in with my 777 brush now and pick up the 
glistening color. And I'm just gonna pop this on the center of the eye to just give a little bit of sheen and help pop her eye right in the center. If you're feeling like you, you have too much product and you're placing it on the center of the eye and you're like, wow, that doesn't look blended at all, you could go back in with your fluffy 785 brush and just take what's left of that on that brush and just kind of blend around it to not have that harsh line. It's all about blending. Fluffy brush is great for that. Next, I'm gonna go in, we're gonna give Lindsay some lashes today. So these are the Demi Whiskies. These are a top favorite. They photograph really well. They look really great on without being too intense. So my standard response about lashes is that you do not want your lashes entering the room before you do. So this is a really great lash that's just gonna enhance your eye without being too much in, too over the top. So most people will need a lash trim. So any clients that I talk to that say they try to apply their lashes themselves and they say they don't fit, they lift in the corners, or they just don't fit right, they feel really heavy, try trimming them. So I always measure on my client's eye, see how much I have to trim. Typically with most lashes, I have to trim one, if not two, off the edges. I personally trim off the longer side. It depends on what kind of look you're doing. If you want it to be a more dramatic look, trim off from the shorter end. If you want it to be more of a subtle look, we're gonna trim off the longer end. And I'm just going to measure. I'm gonna have you open for me and look down. Look down, yeah, perfect. I know, left, right, up, down. There's mm -hmm. so many rules. So with Lindsay, I'm gonna trim off one off of the end. So with this one, there is a grouping of lashes and there is a single lash, if you can see that. I'm gonna trim off the grouping of lashes and then the one single um, lash. I am applying Duo to the lash. This is a really cool, this is like a brush on duo. I've used the squeeze white duo that needs to set up. Um, I've used the um, black drying glue. That one's really great. Kind of creates a natural um, eyeliner by putting it on. I love this one because we did more of a natural eye with her liner that this glue will dry clear. So it's not gonna add that harshness of a black glue. Um, and I really just love that it dries down clear and then we're gonna go over it with a little bit of liner. And I love having my client look down. Every artist is different, but I love having my, my client look down because they're not keeping their eye closed. So there's less of a chance of it being stuck um, in the corners if they still had their eye open just a little bit. And I love applying lashes before mascara because some people feel that the lash is heavy even once it's applied. So I love to mascara afterward to really lift their lashes up into those fake lashes so that you are getting more of that almost like bonding together and it's just going to make them feel more secure and less irritating on the eye. I apply lashes with my hands. I know some artists love to apply with tweezers. I just feel more comfortable applying them with my hands. I feel like I can really get a feel for when the lash is secure onto the lash line. And these are getting applied right where the lash is attached to the lid. So you want there to be no space between the lashes and the false lash. You want it to really just sit in to the lash line. Okay, I'm gonna measure the other side. 
I do need to take off the same on the other side. That's not always the case, but in this case it is. We're gonna take off one of the larger side of the lash and then one of the smaller section. And I'm just putting a really thin amount of glue, enough that it's coated, but it's not dripping down the lash because then her lashes are gonna get stuck onto the fake lash and we just want the band to be applied to the lash. And sometimes with the lashes, you might need to manipulate them a little bit. So bending them so that they fit more to the shape of the eye. Um, sometimes with the glue on, just to help it get a little bit tacky, I will work the band and then place it into the eye. Usually with the thicker lashes, um, you really, you do have to manipulate them just because they kind of take the shape of the tray that they come on. And sometimes that is not uh, the shape of the eye. So we need to just uh, manipulate them a little bit. And I usually have my client until I can tell that they're, they're dry and this drip was drying down pretty quick, but I usually have them kind of stay open or looking down depending on how long it takes for the glue to dry just so that they're not touching up Sometimes they'll look up too and they will touch the band of glue to the top where you just applied eyeshadow, which is frustrating. It can be frustrating as a makeup artist because then you have to go back in and fix that work. But so I usually just give direction as far as if I'm noticing it's not drying as quick as I wanted to, have them looking down um, until I can tell that it's dry. So it's not messing up any of the work that you already did. So I'm actually gonna go back in with this, as I'm chucking it on you, <laughs> just keeping everybody on their toes. Um, I'm gonna go back in with this uh, lionfish, this smudge stick. I'm actually going to take a little bit of that um, pencil brush that we use, I call this pencil brush, a 780. I'm gonna take a little bit of the product from the top of the pencil or the twist off. So, Fun fact about the smudge stick, if you twist it up, you will not be able to twist it down. So only twist up what you need for the day and then you won't have to worry about wasting the product. So it will dry out, which is why it is not able to be twisted back down. So that I'm not going to discuss. I'm, I learned that the hard way. And I'm just going to go over with the lionfish, blending over that band of the lashes. So you really want the lashes to look seamless with the other lashes and you don't want the band to be standing out that someone could tell that you put lashes on your client or on yourself. So just creating that cohesive blending look is just going to help so it doesn't look like the lashes are standing out. You could also go back in with your 785, this fluffy brush that I'm gonna continue talking about, and even work in a little bit over top. Next, I'm gonna put on the Stila Huge Mascara. So as a makeup artist, I always have spoolies, um, disposable mascara wands, I never apply the tube of mascara to my client unless I plan on giving her the tube. So it's not sanitary. If you wanna be able to use the product again, I highly recommend investing in some spoolies. There's some really great places where you can get them for super cheap and it's a great staple. I use them for brows combing out. Um, I've used them to pick up product on the face if I didn't wanna to touch. So um, it's a really great uh, tool to keep in your kit. So I'm just gonna take the mascara, I'm gonna have you look down again. I have my client look down. 
I just do a little lift and then I work the product wiggling at her lash line and pulling up into the front, into the lash that we applied. Lindsay's rock solid. We've been doing this so many times. <laughs> she's, she's good, but it's not always going to be that case with your clients. They might pull away or um, flinch. And I mean, how often do we have somebody else applying mascara? We don't. So it's definitely something that is um, getting used to having that done, which is why I hold too onto the lid to give a little bit of security, not heavy, just simply resting my thumb here. It's also protecting, if you can see my finger, it's protecting my work. So I'm using this mascara and I'm pulling up on the lashes and I do not want that to get all over the lid that I just applied shadow on. Kind of a little insurance for the work you just did. And so for Lindsay, we're actually, I'm not going to apply much on the bottom. I want to just give her, I want the focus to be on the top and these lashes. And I am going to just use the remaining product that's on the spoolie. And I'm going to look up. And I'm just going to lightly apply on the bottom. I love working the spoolie left and right, using mostly the tip of the product. Instead of pulling down on the bottom, I just feel like it gives a softer look instead of it being really heavy. And if people have really long lashes on the bottom, it can easily get spidery. So I like to make it just look really natural, enhancing what she has. And I am really, I'm hands on with my clients as far as making sure, like if I'm working on the other side, if you saw that I put my hand on her, it was just to help stabilize her so that she knew I was working over on that side. It just helps to give more of a reassurance. And it's just, it, it, for me as a makeup artist, it just helps to be more of like a stabilization. Okay. Hi. Oh, awesome. Sloan says she loves the smudge stick and the, and the burgundy shade. Love it. Yes. Everyone's favorite go-to color. Yes. Love it. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Okay. So we are going to move on to the face. So as I mentioned, I do eyes first and then I move on to the skin. So I just wanted to talk about these products, which have been a huge game changer. So these are the Beauty RX um, Tetrafoliant Glycolic Peels. So it comes as a two-part kind of process. So you can work your way up to the 10% glycolic. If you're super sensitive, I would recommend testing a piece of, you know, testing a small spot on the face before going full bore with the whole pad to see how sensitive you are. Um, if you've been working with glycolic, you'll probably be okay with doing that, but that's a really great test to start out with that. But this is a game changer. It's gonna help to, yeah, see everyone, they're talking about them, the progressive peels, they love them. So this is just going to be a really great way to resurface gently your skin. So we have so much, there's pollution in the air, we're wearing makeup. So we have that buildup that will be in the skin without us even realizing it. So even if our skin looks great, underneath there could be stuff that brewing, which is not always exciting, um, kind of terrifying actually. So I love doing this. You can do it once every other day, work your way up to that. But I like to do it, honestly, I do it once a week. So I do a physical exfoliator and I do a chemical exfoliator on different days during out the week. I have borderline sensitive skin, so I can't go crazy and start doing all of these pads because then my skin will overproduce and it will break out. So it's just finding that balance for you and really finding what works and trying it for yourself. So even if they're telling you to use it every other day, try it once a week, see how it does. If you do great, increase it to twice a week or three times a week. So really building up and learning your skin and what's gonna work best for you. But this is a game changer for resurfacing the skin.
So next, I am going to use the Beauty RX Nourishing Moisture Cream. So this moisturizer I got with the Blushington Academy. I, I will honestly say I am very particular about the products I use on my face. I very, I used to have cystic acne. So anything that I try, I'm very worried that it's going to break me out. So this one I tried, it has vitamin C, vitamin E, and green tea, and my skin loved it. It wasn't greasy, it's oil-free, and it's going to just give you a really great nourishment for the skin without being too heavy. So even if you feel like you're oily, you could use this, and I can almost bet that it's going to reduce the amount of oil you see on your skin too. Many times when we feel we have oily skin, we're actually overproducing because we could be really, really dry. So no matter what type of skin you have, you need a moisturizer. And this is a really great, just calming, neutral moisturizer that I recommend for all of my clients. And I've noticed a personal change in my skin by using it as well. So because I am working on a client, I am going to take um, a spatula here. I'm going to pull some of the product out and I'm going to work on my palette again. A little bit goes a long way. And I am going to actually apply it. You can apply it with your fingers. Um, I like working with brushes on my clients. And this is the 948. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the product. And starting, same thing, where we want the most of our product. So we want to put it in the center of the face and work out. It's been insanely hot already here in Arizona. And we are already starting to notice the change in our skin. We're more dry and we're feeling like we're sweating even more, obviously, than we used to. It's going to be 117 next week, just for reference for anybody not living here in Arizona. So you really just want to keep your skin hydrated. And a really great moisturizer is going to help you do that, as is drinking copious gallons of water if you can stomach it. I love using this brush. It just works the product in. A little bit goes a long way, like I mentioned. And then I am working on a forehead. And then I like to work the rest of the product into the neck. really lightweight without feeling too heavy, which is really great. Especially if you're somebody who doesn't love wearing a lot, that you feel like moisturizer is gonna make you feel even heavier. This is a really great way to just have a really light moisturizer and not feel heavy. So let's talk about these products that I learned about in the Washington Academy. If you want to hear about my Friday, I do a Friday favorite and it's on my Instagram as well in the highlights Friday favorites. But these products are like tried and true swoon worthy products. So this is Herborian. These are products, like I mentioned, that I got in the Academy and they have been a game changer, not only for me, but for my clients. So I'm going to start as Lindsay's primer with this CC Dull Correct. So this is a, it start comes out almost purple, if you can see. And it works into the skin and it works up to be more, it blends in and looks like actual skin, a skin color. So we're not gonna make her look like she's purple all over. But this is going to help with sallowness. So it's gonna help to brighten the skin. So I love Sloan, how do you heat makeup on? Um, you get really good at setting sprays and really prepping the skin and making sure that your uh, makeup stays on. So using good products helps with that. Um, so this um, primer is one of my favorites. It just really helps to give life to the skin. I call it zhuzh. So when we're feeling that it's so hot here where we're just like, oh my gosh, like I, I'm like feeling like my skin is so dry. I just really want some extra life to it. This is a really great product for that. A little bit goes a long way. 
Notice how I keep saying that. We all, good product is gonna last and give you really good, a little bit like you're investing in the product and it's really going to pay back. So I am actually going to um, flip over the brush that we apply the moisturizer on. I apply just a little bit onto my palette again. And I'm gonna be starting in the center of the face again and just lightly working this in. You don't need a lot of this product. It's going to neutralize. And Herborian has skincare, it's a Korean skincare brand and makeup brand. And it is really just going to improve your skin by using it. It gives you a really pretty soft glow without being disco ball glittery because not everybody wants that. We want our skin to look like skin without being too much. And as a makeup artist, not all of your clients are gonna want super over the top, um, like shimmery on the face. So this is a really great solution. And this is really great too, because if you didn't feel like putting on anything else over top of it, you didn't want to put on a foundation or a BB cream, you could just leave it like this. And that could be your base. You have a little bit of shimmer on, or a little bit of like glow to the skin and you could just go out the door and that would be great. And your skin, especially in Arizona would love it. But I am going to apply the BB cream. This is the Herborian BB cream. It's like, a mix between butter on the face with like the perfect amount of like almost moussiness, but not. It has a really beautiful finish. We're gonna be using uh, Claire today. And same thing, I'm gonna apply to my palette. And I am actually going to use brush 959. So I love buffing on uh, beauty, like beauty balms. So you could, the BB cream, you could apply with your finger. You can apply with, people love to apply it with a beauty blender. I love applying it with a fluffy brush because you can really diffuse the product on the skin and not need a lot of the product. So I'm just taking a little bit of the product onto the top of the brush, same thing. We don't want it to be saturated into the brush because it's going to apply too much product. So I'm gonna start in the center of the face. Buffing the product in. And what I love is that you can build up this coverage. If you did want a little bit more coverage, you love the BB cream, but you want a little bit more of like a medium coverage, you could definitely do that. I'm gonna give Lindsay just a really light polished look. Skin looks like skin. That's what is so important. That's the kind of makeup that I love doing where skin looks like skin. You can have several layers. We have a moisturizer on, we have a primer. Now we have a BB cream on, but it doesn't look like she's wearing a super heavy full coverage foundation. It looks like she's polished, pretty, and buffed down where you can still see freckles or you can see that her skin has texture to it. and always working along that jawline and down.
next product I'm going to use is the Aqua Becca Aqua Luminous Concealer. So love that it has a doe foot applicator. So if you're applying it on yourself, you could just boop, boop, two dots under the eyes. Depending on how much coverage you wanted, you could do one dot and blend it out. Because I'm working on a client, I am going to apply it once again to my palette. Find a spot that has not been covered with other product. And I just roll the doe foot applicator onto the palette. This is gonna give a really beautiful finish without looking really heavy under the eyes. And I am actually going to use the 936 brush for that. Picking up a little bit of product. And just starting on the inner corner and working You could definitely do a color correction under the eye. Um, depending on some clients, you'll have to do a color correction under the eye. But for most people, just doing more of that concealer and just brightening even under that eye is going to be enough for everyday wear. Now, if you're doing a photo shoot and you have a client or a model that's under heavy lights or a different kind of lighting, you will um, you may have to do a color correction, but I'm loving how this just brightens Lindsay under the eyes without being really heavy. And I love how this dries down. It dries down to almost like it's a jet, like an aqua luminous. So it's going to dry down to more of a, not shimmer, but enough that it's not going to look super matte under the eyes. Next is the Jouer setting powder. So I typically, as a makeup artist, I am not huge on the powder. I know, gas, yes, right? Every makeup artist is like, you have, to, you have to do the baking, you have to do the setting. Yeah, that's great to set it, but I personally do not love caking all of the face on with the powder. So I love a, a really lightweight powder that you can really just use like a fluffy brush, diffuse it over the work that you've already done, and then add your color on top to give dimension. So I am going to use this Mama Jamma fluffy brush. This is the 980, and I am just kind of pressing the brush into the powder. I'm not swirling it, I'm not like jabbing it in, I'm just picking up enough product that I can set my work without adding, making it look heavy. and I love to work in the center of the face, this is where we're gonna get oily. And that's the areas that I pr pretty much stick to. Um, maybe giving a little bit more on the nose or the forehead, especially if your client says like, oh no, I get oily in my T-zone. I will go back in with a little bit more, but her skin still looks like skin. And I am lightly going under her eyes. I don't want to put too much powder under her eyes so that everything settles and looks really heavy. Next, I'm gonna go in with the Jouer. This is the light to medium bronzer duo. I love that you get two, of, two colors of bronzer. It's really great too for you, helping you to transition between um, your seasons. So I will say, as a makeup artist, I love bronzer. I use bronzer every day that I do makeup. I feel like it gives me that little extra life that I need to my skin. Um, and you can just kind of create that dimension on the face without being a heavy contour. So I love to just apply the product. I use it to create shape in the face. And this is the 942 brush. I'm sorry if I, I got excited about that. On here. And I like that this brush gives you control over where you're putting the product. 
but still blendable. So it's a little bit angled, if you can see. And I just work a little bit where the sun would naturally kiss her face. Going back, if you need more product, picking up a little more product on the brush. Working that product slightly over. Now, you can really go full bore if you want to be bronze, sun-kissed, go to town. But we're doing more of like that natural look. And so I wanted to give that definition. She has a little bit of that sun kiss glow, but she still looks pure and natural. I love to take what's remaining on the brush, buff it across her nose and across her chin. So that it's giving that cohesion with the whole face, but it's not super heavy where it's too much on the nose or it's too much on the chin. Next, I'm going to go in with this gorgeous Becca um, blush. This is um, Camellia. So this is the Luminous blush. And it has a little bit of a sheen. I don't know if this, you can pick this up, but it has a little bit of a sheen. And I'm gonna go back in with the same brush that we used for the bronzer. I just took a little bit on the paper towel and just kind of wiped off any remaining bronzer that was on it. It's okay if a little bit is still on the brush. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of the product and buff it right on the apples of her cheeks, but working the product up so it's not like she has the jab of the blush on her cheeks. And I love that this gives you a little luminosity once again, without looking like a disco ball, it just really, really gives a beautiful sheen on the face. Now, I love a solid cheek, clearly. I love a solid cheek, but not your, not your client is going to be always one who does as well. So you can always build up, but I love that you can start with less and then build up to more. And I'm just taking what's left on the brush and just giving her a little bit of that uniformity across the rest of her face. So Lindsay has microbladed brows, but, so we're not gonna apply anything over them because when you've got a microbladed, you don't, you can just wake up and go, which is really awesome. But I did use the Kevin Kwan brow, precision brow pencil on my brows. This is brunette that I use. I love it because it really gives um, a beautiful control on the brow. So you can, I like to line underneath and then back to that spoolie we talked about. This does not come with a spoolie. Flies, it does. See, man, so exciting when I find things out like that. But these spoolies are really great for that for clients. You could comb through on them and then make sure your uh, pencil is sanitized and then you could come, you know, use this and then blend out with this as well. So the spoolie is really great for diffusing those harsh lines that you create with the pencil and you, it just helps to make it blended and uniform. So you can create hairs if you wanted to, or you could really just work the product um, all the way in for that harsher line. If you wanted a really strong brow, you can create that or you can blend it down with hmm, spoolie on the side. So this is um really great product. This is like my new favorite brow pencil. I've used lots of them. Some of them break, some of them aren't the color payout that I expect, but this one is really phenomenal. So it's a Kevin Kwan. So last but not least, we are going to um, pop a little lip onto Lindsay here. Same thing, always sanitizing your lip liner. This is the Kevin Kwan in minimal. So this has become a really great lip color that I love using for that bride who wants a really natural look or for that client who wants a really natural look. They want definition without being too dark on the lip. This is, enhances basically the natural lip color, which is really awesome.
So I like to go start on the corners and I'm just doing little strokes and following her lip line. I like to start on the bottom to just give that definition. And then I start from the outer and work in. So it helps when you're starting from the outside working in, it helps to follow the natural shape of the lip. More of like a flow, it'll just help to pull the product in without making it really um, like really bowed or intense lip line. You could also go back in with the lip brush, which is what I'm going to use to apply the next product here, but you could go in with and apply and blend down the lip liner so you, it is not as intense and more diffused as well by using the brush. So for Lindsay's lip color, I'm actually just going to use the Jouer Lip Enhancer. So this is like a great keep in your purse, add to your day touching up to kind of like a, a better chapstick. So it's going to have some shea butter in it. It's going to have some vitamin E. And I love this to just keep with our pure and natural look. Definition from the lip liner, but then adding this sheen and enhancing her natural lip color. polished, pretty, and she still looks like her, which is the kind of makeup that I love doing. So if you have any questions, I think we're winding down on time, but if you have any questions, we can, I will um, answer them in the chat here. But thank you so much for joining us for the signature, Washington Signature Pure and Natural Look. And you'll get a follow-up email within 48 hours. You'll get a code this afternoon, but the code will be good for 48 hours. Use STEP10 to save 10% off your order if you saw anything. And thank you to Joseph, my master IT, um, for putting in the full look link. So that's great. And my Instagram again is stephanieN7. If you have any questions, you can ask me directly. Um, I, I recommend you checking out my video on the Washington Academy as well as my Friday favorite. Thank you so much everyone for joining me and stay tuned on June 23rd for my fellow graduate Yvonne Smith who's going to be teaching a smoke and mirrors look so that's your more smoky look which is really awesome I'm so excited for that for her she's so great and I appreciate everybody for coming and thank you so much have a good one <laughs>